Okay, here we go. Pretty exciting. I got this uh, cart, this nice wheel around cart from uh, Sam's Club. 60 bucks. Things are beautiful, isn't it? So I said, you know what would be a great idea? Get a piece of uh, high density polyethylene and uh, put it on the top of it. I'll put four little holes in here. I'll uh, hit it with a radius bit. I'll even put a little uh, blood groove going around in case you're cutting on something in your kitchen and you know it gets a little sloppy there'll be a little groove running around here uh, to uh, catch up the dripping so uh, anyway for 60 bucks and the purchase of a little bit of a uh, high density polyethylene this is a fda so it's food grade so something like this you can either put a maple uh, i guess you put maple on top of here but i like plastic um, i didn't have any access to maple so i bought a piece of uh, this plastic off of uh, ebay so let's uh, get it together i'm gonna Cut this, you can see it's a little too big, way too big. I'll uh, cut it, uh, make it the right width, uh, radius it, and put a groove through it, and put four countermores in the back side, and uh, see how it looks. So, hope you enjoy. Okay, first thing I'll do, I put the handle on, I built this card, I put the handle on. And I don't think I'm going to use it. Anymore. These metrics carts, they pop. They pop right apart. So I think the handle. I don't really have a big kitchen, so I think the handle is just going to be in the way more than anything else. So we'll just uh, put that in a pile of uh, probably never use it again pile. So I measured out the top of this. This is about uh, 30. 30 inches. So I measured two lines. You know, you want just, I want it just a little bit bigger than this. So I made it, uh, you know, 30 and a half. I marked this and I use this for a straight edge. And what I'll do is uh, I'm going to actually hold this down with clamps. And the clamps are down with clamps. So I'm going to hold this level down with clamps. So now I can saw right up against it. So I get a real nice sharp uh, straight line. I might not be able to cut it here because I don't have enough uh, weight to hold on to it. So let me fixture that. So I marked this line right here at uh, whatever my dimension. On this one it's 31 inches, right? So I want to get a nice straight edge. So what I did, I, uh, you know, I got my nice little four foot long level, right? I noticed that this was square pretty much from a factory. Uh, so I only have to worry about, you know, I put two dimensions parallel, one from there to here, there to there. So everything else is square back there. So I don't have to worry about squaring that up. So I left one and a half inches right here from this edge to this. And that coincides with the dimension of my saw right here. If you look at the saw, you know, it's one and a half inches also. So I'm going to take that saw, set it up, push it alongside this way, and uh, I will have a nice straight edge with any luck. So let me set that up and I'll cut that. But this is a nice easy way to get a good straight edge. Use something long that's solid. I got these nice, uh, you know, I think they're made by uh, you know, vice grip, I guess. But uh, these nice little clamps, that holds it down rather well. And as long as you don't push really hard against it, I think it's going to stay in place. So that'll get us a nice straight edge. Then I'll have to cut one this way because it's too wide also. But uh, at least I'll have most of the big stuff done by then. So let me set it up and I'll cut it. Now this is a you know wood blade, right? But uh, this polyethylene, it should cut just about the same as wood. So it shouldn't be a concern there. Good deal. On the 
stink bug or two. So like I say, once I'm done with the outside size, I'll uh, radius this whole thing with a radius bit. Then I'll do all around it. Then like I said, I'll put a blood groove. So let me get the width now set up and I'll cut that. And again, I put another mark here where I want to cut it, inch and a half back, take my saw, and it's going to be beautiful. And I just, uh, I probably should have a better place to cut it, but the carpet seems to be working. It doesn't take much to cut, so we're cutting it. If you don't feel secure cutting it like this, don't do it. Use a stronger table, whatever you want to do, but I think it'll be fine. noisy but you get the idea. So it looks like that blade could be a little sharper but like I said at the end of the day that's going to be a radius around there anyway. So let me uh, hit this edge with a file. I think we're done with the cutting portion of this. We'll hit this with a file a little bit and get it set up for uh, you know, figure out where the groove's going to be and get this set up for routing around here. Just any file will do. The, probably the coarser the better, but again, you're just getting that, all that fuzz knocked out there. Okay, so once we hit it with the radius on the router, add a smooth right out. I think what I want to do first though is set up the blood groove because I'm thinking if I put the radius on first it's going to be hard to figure where the blood groove, you know, the little groove goes. So I'm going to set it up based off of this and I'll do the same type of thing. I'll put the level up there and I'll run it and I'll have to stop it right at the right spot. Then I'll put the level the other way, tie it down and just do that to get the, the inner groove going. So let me set one of those up and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so here we go. I marked this one and a quarter inch the whole way around with a green marker. And I'm going to use a level, the same four foot level, to give me a nice straight edge. I got my nice router. I don't have a plunge router. A plunge router, you can put it down, then turn it to a dimension. I don't have that. So I'll just slowly angle it down. The only thing I have to look out here for is uh, I don't want to run too far over here. so. I'll have to look through my little window here and look at the radius, look at the router bit itself. And once I get to the center line the other way, I'll just have to stop. Not the biggest problem in the world, I don't think. So I think it'll work out. And again, this router, I shouldn't say again, but again, this router is six inches. So we know if it's six inches diameter that I need this back three inches. So I just eye this up to three inches. That's about right. That's about right. I clamp it. And if I push lightly against there, uh, I should be able to get a nice straight line right where I want it. And you can put this groove anywhere. I want to put it a little further in, so that's where I'm putting it. So let's do it. I'll do one, and uh, you can imagine I did the other ones. How's that?
So let's take a look at that groove, huh? Not bad. And I just put it down, I don't know, a quarter inch, something like that. You really don't need much of a groove. This one looks like I could have went, it looks actually pretty close. If you look at the line to here, that doesn't look too bad. It looks like on this one, I might have went too far. Oh well. But anyway, let me do the other three, then I'll set it up for the, uh, the big radius in the outside. And for that, you know, you just, you just put a radius on the outside. You don't have to do any tricky things to it, like with a level or a straight edge or anything. So let me set it up. Okay, I didn't do too bad. Anytime you do these, you know, even with a, a, a level, you can see I went, just like I said, I went a little too deep there. Uh, you're not going to get perfect, but I'm okay with that. You keep at it, and you'll get better at it. I only do this type of stuff once every never. So anyway, it came out pretty good. You can see a little warble there. So now I'm going to take uh, another router bit. This is, uh, it's unplugged. Oh, no, it isn't. It's plugged. So watch yourself as these things are plugged. Uh, I got to take another right router bit, uh, an outside radius, and I'm going to go right around this. I'll go right around this perimeter. Uh, that shouldn't be too big of a deal. I don't, again, I don't need any uh, straight edges to get me corrected because I have, you can see there's a bearing on this uh, router bit. And, uh, you know, that'll guide me along this edge. I do want this edge pretty smooth though. You don't want any bumps on it. You saw me filing it before, I'll probably hit it again. And uh, I'll take care of and get it nice and smooth. So that way the router's not bouncing around like this. Now just be very careful. Hopefully you've used routers before. Um, these router bits are sticking out of the router. Um, and if they touch you or anybody that you know, uh, they'll tear you up. They're, uh, these little routers, they look pretty peaceful and everything, but uh, they're badass. Uh, they really get the material. I, I use these for woodworking, you know, putting radiuses on rough lumber and such the same exact bit and it is this is a serious tool it doesn't look as serious as a saw a circular saw but uh, again this thing is spinning really fast if it touches you who baby so okay let me set this up and we're gonna do some rubbing now hopefully this doesn't fly off I still need to put, I should have put the holes in the bottom side first, but I didn't.
not too bad. What I did was, you know, you could see me, I was taking it slow the first cut. I sort of didn't push the whole way down because it is a lot of plastic you're removing. And uh, I sort of went around twice. And the second time I pushed it up against the edge a little bit more and uh, it worked out pretty well. So you can see it's sort of straight. It's not too bad. So we're good to go on this side. So anyway, it's going to be cool cutting board, right? Now, if you get a little spillage or something, and again, it's counter space. I have a small kitchen, so shouldn't be anything stored on top of this. You got storage down below to put whatever. So you can re wheel this around wherever you need it, cut things up, put it on the stove. It uh, should be great. But anyway, I still have to put four holes on the back side of this, right where these posts are. Otherwise, this thing's just going to slide all over the place. So let me set them up and uh, see if I can get them in the right spot. Hold on a second. Okay, so I got my uh, nice Forrester bit here, Forstner bit, and uh, anyway, this is a gets you a, a nice square bottomed hole uh, in just about anything. And this plastic, it's a little tough to drill, but uh, you know you'll get through it. But uh, anyway, so I marked it. These aren't exactly perfect dimensions, so you sort of have to take a guesstimate on what they are. You know, you look center to center, like this one's. Uh, this one's 28, about 7 eighths. This one's about 16th of an inch off. But anyway, so I took my outside dimension, subtracted my guest dimension here, uh, 28 and 7 eighths, divided that by two. And from each side, I, you know, I uh, put a mark there. And I'm gonna uh, drill that mark. And this bit, you know, these are one inch diameter uh, posts. This bit's about an eighth inch bigger in diameter. So I'll be able to, uh, you know, have a little bit of slop there. It doesn't have to fit perfect. This is pretty heavy. It's not going anywhere. I think it'll work good. So my plan is to uh, bury this the whole way in there, right? So I get it to, to this depth here. And uh, then I'll uh, put it on top. And I'll see if uh, it might be a little tilty. And I might have to drill one of the holes a little deeper. Because anytime you're sitting on four posts, uh, it's not going to sit flat right off the get-go. So, so let's try it. Let's go about a quarter inch down. Let's see what that looks like. There you go. It's not going to 
to go anywhere. I mean, it's a pretty heavy piece of plastic, so I'm not going to bolt it down. I'm just going to lay it on top there. I think I will take them a little bit deeper. But uh, it looks good. So, how's it look from the camera? You know, now you got a nice little, this is about, uh, well, let's measure it here. It's got to be about 38 inches tall. Oh, here it is. Nope, 35 inches tall. So you really want it a little bit taller for cutting, maybe about 4 inches taller. But I think this is okay. I'm only, uh, you know, 5'8", so I'll live with it. But uh, now you can do your cutting up top, right? Keep whatever you need underneath there. I think it's a neat little uh, project. So I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm going to take those holes just a little bit deeper, but it sort of even sits flat. This is, uh, again, high-density polyethylene. It's strong enough. You don't have to worry about the center sagging either. So you don't have to have any other kind of structure underneath there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is one of those projects that's, you know, it's one of those things you see, you're like, you know, I can make something really neat out of it. A couple different, uh, you know, this and a little bit of a, a countertop. So hope you enjoyed. Have a nice day. Bye.